In the previous video, I talked about the basic user interface of Nuke Studio, as well as project settings. In this video, we'll talk about onlining or conforming media when working with EDLs, XMLs, or AFs from editorial. So I'm just going to start a new project, and I can either bring in the EDL, XML, AF, either through the file import menu here. I can right click on my project and do import EDL, XML, AF, or if I had a window browser open, I can just drag the XML onto the project window over here. For now, I'm just going to right click and import EDL XML AF and select my editorial cut here. Let that load up. And there we have our timeline with our shots cut up, but we don't have our actual footage loaded in just yet. And that's because all we have in our project right now, as you can see, is just our sequence that was built from the XML. So I need to actually match the media from say the network or the, the local disc with the shots that are in my timeline. So what I'm going to do is jump into conforming. Conforming gives us our spreadsheet and in our spreadsheet view, we have a button called match media. I click match media. It's going to ask for folder location of where the footage might be located. Now you can narrow it down to the specific folder that contains all the footage if you like, or if you, you know, just want a general folder like this footage one that contains other folders as well. You can select the general folder and it'll search through all these folders as well. It might take a little bit longer depending on the size of your project. You might want to narrow it down to a specific folder. Because this one's small, I'm just going to hit open. Now you get the conform options window. That's quite a few options here for you to choose from to set up and really filter things out. Rather than going into all of these into detail, you can check those out in the user guide or going to learn.foundry.com and search under conform options for a little bit more information about those. Including patterns, here you can import, make sure it's importing all the files, all the supported files, or if you just want to narrow your search down even further, you can use a wildcard like say asterisk.mov and it's only going to search for MOV files. By default, it's set to exclude any nuke scripts or nuke non-commercial scripts. If you want to include those and you have some in your timeline, then you just have to delete those and they'll include those as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and bring in or match my footage to the shots on my timeline. Great. So it found 25 of 27 clips. And let's just go over to our spreadsheet and see what we have. So all these shots are good to go. They're in green with the exception of these two at the bottom that are red. So if I select these in my spreadsheet and I check out my timeline to see where they're located, they actually are audio files. OK, so no problem. I can go ahead and match the media for those. Go into my audio folder, grab that audio file. Once again, hit OK. And then now it's reconnected those clips for me. Before I go any further at this point, though, I'm going to go ahead and save my project. All right, so looking at the footage so far, we can see uh, might not be working in the correct color space. So what I can do is actually, if I'm pretty sure that all these clips are the same, you know, it looks like it, I can just select all of them if I want like that. If I right click and go set media color transform. I can choose what I want all these transforms to be. I'm just going to go to rec 709 and that should help us out there. Yep. Sure did. I'm going to change my viewer up to rec 709 as well. There we go. So that's looking better already. So now that I see we have quite a few tracks in here, let's um, bring in our reference media to figure out what we have going on here. So again, in the spreadsheet view, we can set reference media button to locate our reference media for that. And I'm going to go, it's going to be in my offlines folder and I'll select this offline here and brought in my reference for me and it created a reference track as you can see here. Now, if I want to see just this track by itself, I can press one on the keyboard and it's going to load it into my viewer for me, just like so. What it's basically doing is loading into the A buffer up here. So before we were probably viewing all tracks, just like that, select reference track from here or as I did before, just by pressing one on the track itself to load it into the A buffer. You do notice there's a B buffer. So I can compare two different tracks in here if I want. So if I select the video one track, hit two, you see it automatically creates a wipe for me. And with this wipe, I have different options now of how I want to view this. I can either view it as a wipe, I can stack them, horizontal, 
vertical. I think for now we'll just we'll set it to wipe. So that way we can use some of these other blending methods here, like onion skin or difference or invert and add. Set it to onion skin. So that way we can just wipe between the two, make sure everything's lining up between our offline with our online material. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and rename our tracks. So I know that these are gonna be the plates. Call that one plates. And then take a look over here. It looks like they're gonna be on the screen here. So we'll just call these screens. And let's see what's on this track here. So this looks like our animation reference. So we'll call this the reference AnimRef. Great, and there's nothing on our video four track yet. So if you'll notice our shots in our track here, this is, they're currently named by their clip name. And the clip name's here in actual parentheses. So that's the actual name of the clip. And the shot name is just inherited the clip name by default. But if we want to change that and rename our shots, what we can do is let's go ahead and make sure we have all our shots in view here. I can bring the entire timeline to view by pressing F and it's going to fit it for me. And then now I can just select all the shots on this track. What I'll do is right click, go to editorial and rename shots. Now I already have this set up by default where this is going to name it cd underscore sh and then some number padding here for my shots I'm telling it to start off at shot 10 and increase in increments of 10 so it's going to shot 10 shot 20 shot 30 so on and so forth we do have a few other rename options here simple rename find and replace if you need to replace any information in there match a sequence clip name clip name is Say if you've already renamed these shots and you want it to actually be the name of the clip, revert it back to what you're seeing here. Then you use clip name just to rename it by the name of the clip. And then you can change the case as well for the naming convention. Going back to sequential, we'll, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to hit rename. And then you can see that it renamed all my shots for me based off of that structure that we set up in increments of 10. So shot 90, shot 100, shot 110. Shot 120. Once again, I'll just go ahead and hit Control S to save where we're currently at with this. Now what I want to do is take the names of these and copy it, cut up my reference media. So what I can do is if I select my reference media, I'll right click, go to editorial. I'm going to do copy cuts. Now it's asking me where do I want to copy these cuts from? I actually want to copy it from my plates track. What do I want to copy it to? I want to copy it to my reference. And we might as well copy it to the audio as well. And I can rename uh, at the same time that I'm copying these cuts. So it's going to name all these cuts that I'm going to make the same from the shot that it's taking from. Hit OK. And there you have it. You can see it's renamed it and it's cut it up to match the plates. Okay, so far we've created a new project, imported an XML, matched the media to that XML, we've named our tracks, brought in the reference track, we've named our shots, copied cuts from our plates to our reference track. So at this point, probably would just go on to conform the shot, making sure the online material matches with the offline reference, at least in the general ballpark there. For now, we'll stop down on this project, so go ahead and save where you're at. Next video, we'll talk about organizing your media now that you have some in your project and how the organization can make navigating through your assets a lot easier.